Be out here having babies with niggas that you are not married to. Not married to. Not married to. The term co-parenting is taken so lightly in this generation. Like, I'm sorry, some of y'all. Huh. I don't understand you and we would never understand each other. Do you hear me? Don't get mad at me. I'm just here to make a couple things clear and get a couple things straight. You are not a co-parent if you just see your kids on the weekend. You are not a co-parent if all you think you got to do is pay child support. This is what co-parenting is. Co-parenting is when there's two parents and they're equally involved in their children's life slash their activities and those same two parents share the same responsibilities and obligations parenting is simply like i drop him or her off and you just pick him or her up co-parenting is i'll bring the game snacks this week you just get them next week co-parenting is hey look i might not be able to make it to that teacher conference pick up the slack for me though co-parenting is like look she got an extra expense going on this month. Like, I took it last month. You got it this month. Listen, I don't care what nobody else got to say. If that other parent can't count on you like that, then you're not the co-parent. Nope. This is not up for debate. This trend that they got going on now of, like, just the weekend or this part-time, whatever they call it, is not parenting. Don't shoot the messenger, but if you ain't doing any of the things that I talked about, all you are doing is simply visiting your child and you wrong. I'm not here to bash you, but I'm here to speak the truth. If this sounds like you, then there's really only one parent maintaining the child while you get them um, the little every other weekend, couple weekends out the month to do the fun, cool stuff. You are in fact single with a kid or kids that you get sometimes, but you live your life 90% of the time with no responsibilities and no obligations. I don't know if you gotta replay this video. I don't really care what you gotta do, but there is, in fact, a huge difference. And I'm not talking to the parents that are trying to be in their children's life and the other parents just bitter, don't know, I, I just acting all out. I'm not talking to y'all before you comment and say, what about the parent that's keeping, I'm, I, I went through that and I don't really agree with none of that, but I'm the person that will put myself on child support and I don't care how much money I got to pay. I will be in my child's life. I will be in my children's life. You got your own opinions and I got mine. Peace. I'm I don't believe in co-parenting. The woman I had a child with, we're not together haven't been for a while okay i don't believe in what is deemed co-parenting elaborate on expound on that what do you mean because co-parenting to me means that you're not fully involved my every waking thought is regarding him and it's the same for his mom even if we don't mm -hmm. get along or not now this is talk that a lot of men we need to have like if you make a child you still are responsible for even when me and his mom were not getting along i was still giving child support two years in advance Different flex, you heard? That's a different. That's it. I'm gonna get the, the child support and, two and years the in advance. Of, I hate you. Da 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 da. Right. All that because right. it can be rough. But I do know the effects if the parents don't have a relationship. It fucks with a kid's confidence. It fucks with education. Higher likelihood of going to jail. High, higher likelihood of joining the gang. Like you have to be there. It's tough. Things in my co-parenting relationship that apparently piss people off. Let's talk about it. We don't restrict access to her or time with her, so we do have a set schedule, however that schedule can change as needed if one of us wants to see her on a day that's not ours. We still do things all together because we're her family just because we divorced each other. That doesn't change that. And yes, we were married. Neither of us believe in child support for our specific situation, and we don't expect anything from each other financially, but we both equally contribute on our own still view my daughter's dad as my best friend because I did love him, we did get married, and we did choose to start a family together. Did things continue to work out that way? No. Did we end on a negative or bad terms? Absolutely not. So yes, he's still my best friend. So y'all bitter little Bettys in the comments need to self-reflect and stop projecting your trauma and thinking that my situation's gonna turn out like yours. Parenting has never been and will never be an equal situation. So... If you are not in a holy matrimony, 
with the person that you have a child with, you are 100% responsible for everything when it comes to that baby. Diapers, doctor's appointments, hair appointments, shoes, daycare expenses. Some men are not going to sacrifice when it comes to being a parent. So if you call in that nigga and you need some milk or some diapers or some wipes, anything to that degree, and he telling you he don't got it, what you think you're going to do, make him give it to you? It's going to be up to you. It's going to be 100% your responsibility to figure out where the fuck you about to get some money for some wipes from. And I don't see this talked about enough because men literally do not sacrifice when it comes to these kids. We got to figure out every aspect of their life. We don't have the luxury to be like, oh, I don't have a car. I can't take my baby to get some new clothes. We got to figure that shit out. We got to get in an Uber. We got to call a family member. We got to do whatever the fuck it is that we need to do to make sure that this kid has clothes. It's optional for them. It's literally optional. And it's fucked up because like, regardless if you know, it was an accident, if you together or not, if you marry, it really shouldn't be like that. It should be 50, 50 or a hundred and a hundred both of you know, our responsibilities or whatever, but it's not like that. So I guess, I don't know, I'm just ranting, but I just really hope that this video finds the right person and you take heed to what the fuck I'm saying, because if you have a baby out of wedlock, that baby is a thousand percent your responsibility. And if it's the wrong nigga, he definitely not going to sacrifice nothing to help you and that baby out. They gonna always put themselves first. When it comes to this life shit, men have always put themselves first. In relationships, when it comes to doing what they gotta do for themselves, when it comes to being a parent, they gonna always put themselves first. So don't put yourself in a situation where you gotta be the one sacrificing everything and getting the shitty end of the stick. Cause that shit'll forever change you. It'll forever fuck up your outlook on parenting, um, relationships, and just everything in general. Cause parenting is hard. It literally takes a village. So if you don't at least have mom and dad to start out with, it's going to be a hard fucking journey for you. And I understand that accidents happen. But in that case, if you can prevent it, just please prevent it. Because when you find yourself in a situation in which you don't have a commitment with somebody and y'all are on the way to bringing a kid into this world, don't get mad if you end up being the one that's sacrificing way more for that kid. Because as a mom that life is literally on you here's your little co-parenting reminder that if the children are in your care you don't have to respond to his messages in our old parenting plan it was put in there that i only had to communicate with him once a week to go about things such as i don't even know updates on the kids and stuff like that so i blocked him and once a week on a certain day in the evening he could email me and he would email me a lot more than that and I would never respond. Stand your ground. Do not accept being treated like crap. Now you guys, that one was a little bit weird for me. Um, if I was co-parenting right now with my two daughters, they're girls, so you know, I'm really protective over them. I would have to hear from my girls at least two or three times a week. Now, if they didn't want to hear from me over the phone, they would at least have to text me. Or, you know, it's different from, you know, him texting me or whatever. But if they didn't have their own phones and, <laughs> and um, you know, when he was co-parenting, coming to pick them up, he would at least have to, like, call me and give them the phone. Cause, or I would be calling that phone or pulling up or blowing that phone up. I'm sorry. Um, I understand, like... The father deserves rights too, but that's what a part of co-parenting is for me. Um, you know, that's up to him not to call when he's when they're with me. So that has nothing to do with my feelings and my, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, my opinion. So um, for the fathers who don't, that's their problem. But for me, um, I would still let him co-parent, but. I probably would feel some type of way, um, honestly. You guys let me know what you guys think and how do you guys work your co-parenting situations out. Um, I would like to hear that. Um, yeah, so let's get back to the next video. So I've been co-parenting my five-year-old daughter with her dad since 2019, and it has been an absolute shit show. 
My current frustration is that I'm trying to get him to communicate with me a little bit more about things that happen in her life the weeks that she's not with me and just the things that might be relevant. A few months ago, I picked her up from her after-school care program, and the instructor there told me that that week, she had a severe emotional breakdown. I messaged him, and I said, hey, like that's information that I feel like I deserve to know as her mom so that I can have these conversations with her. After that, I suggested that the weeks that she was switching homes, that the person whose home she was leaving send just a message to the other parent to let them know if anything noteworthy had happened throughout the week um, so that the other parent could pick up where it was left off just for continuity. He agreed at first, and so the week after that, when she was leaving my house and going to his, I sent him a message just summarizing the week, uh, anything that he should be on the lookout for, things that had to do with the school, and whatnot. But when it came time for her to come to my house from his house, he didn't send me a message. So I reached out and said, hey, did anything, is there anything I need to know? Uh, he said that he would send me a message later on, and he never did. I followed up two times and he didn't respond. A few weeks ago, she came back to me with new ear piercings. Now, her ears have been pierced since she was six months old. She didn't really wear earrings all the time, but those piercings were open, they were active. There was no need for him to re-pierce her ears. So I sent him a message and I said, hey, this would have been the perfect opportunity to just let me know that you were going to pierce her ears because I could have informed you that she already had active piercings. He didn't respond. A few days ago, she didn't feel like going to summer camp. I was working from home, so I let her stay home. Her dad texted me that night to say that the next time I keep her home, I should let him know. And so I said to him, have I not been asking for more communication? I sent him a message just explaining that like our co-parenting, our communication needs to improve because the only person suffering is our child. He sent me a message back that said, unfortunately, you didn't foster the relationship that you want. So this is what it is. So I just want to take this opportunity to remind everybody out there co-parenting that you need to love your child more than you hate the person that you are co-parenting with. You don't have to be friends, you don't have to be buddies, but you have to co-parent. You have to get it together for the sake of your child. Hi everybody. Make sure when you're negotiating a parenting plan that you think about the summer plans for children. Whether they're in day camp or you're going away, you wanna make sure that you plan out for the holiday schedule and make sure that you get as much time as possible. Oftentimes people forget how long the summer is and they don't negotiate for as much time as possible. Thank you guys for watching the video. That's the end. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, and give me a comment about your co-parenting traumas and your co-parenting successes. Um, fellas, also let me know how your co-parenting is going, um, good or bad. Just keep it respectful, please. Um, it's not to like put anyone down. It's just like to get some insight for myself and to share um, some fun TikTok stories about co-parenting. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you guys. Appreciate you.